Hello, this is a do-it-yourself video on how to repair a Domestic 2652 refrigerator in a 24-foot RV. Turn it on and it was not cooling. And uh, so the very first thing I do is uh, come around to the back of the trailer and unhook this access panel. Um, these, little, these little clips, you just need to turn them to, uh, that one is in the uh, unlock position and that one is in the lock position, just as an example. You just turn them with your fingers or corner or something and they'll turn out. So uh, the next thing is, uh, <clears throat> oh, I downloaded the service manual. Um, but by the way, this bridge is rated at uh, 2.9 amps, 120 volts, uh, 1.2 amps for 12 volts, and it is a two-way refrigerator. It is not a three-way. So the first thing to do is uh, take this access panel off. You need to take out a Phillips screw right there, and then the actual... Um, the panel itself shows a diagram of where you need to put a flat screwdriver in to pry the tabs to get the uh, get the cover off. The next thing I noticed was this glass 5 amp fuse was actually bad. It was blown. And uh, well, I put a new one in and uh, just it blew right away. I know fuses sometimes get tired and if you put a new one in you're all set, but no such luck this time. There is actually a real problem. So uh, that fuse had blown. So I downloaded the service manuals from the Domatic website, which has posted all of their documentation, or a lot of documentation. It was very useful. And they say that that 5 amp fuse is the AC fuse that protects only two things. It protects the AC component of that circuit board. It also protects the AC heater. So I took the, uh, took the uh, unplugged the AC heater on J7 and J8 and uh, had my assistant turn on the refrigerator inside and I checked for 120 volts AC at that location with the new fuse in of course and, uh, and it did have 120 volts AC so that told me that the board was trying to send 120 volts or you don't send voltage but had 120 volts applied to the actual AC heater so the next thing I did was took one of the and remember both leads of the heater are disconnected I took one lead and measured resistance from that lead to ground, which is this location right here on this uh, little board. It's not a circuit board, it's just an aluminum grounding plane. So I measured the resistance from that ground lead to one of the disconnected heater leads. And I was getting like 20 mega ohms, something in that range, or 2 mega ohms, I can't remember exactly. It was a really high resistance. That is not an indication of a short to ground. Uh, 20 mega ohms, I mean, I forget what your body would have, but it probably has less resistance than that going through your fingers. So that alone did not cause me significant concern, but uh, just a point to note, there was some resistance to ground there. In the end, I don't think that had anything to do with this problem, by the way. Um, next thing is, uh, uh, and the reason why is just because the sheer magnitude of the short to ground. At the 20 mega ohm range, the current that would flow through there would be in the micro ohms, uh, sorry, micro amps, it wouldn't have, just wouldn't have made any difference. Um, okay, so the next thing I did was measure the resistance between the two leads, of course, off of the circuit board again, and the factory spec says 44 ohms, plus or minus 10%. That means the resistance of this element can be as low as 39.6 ohms and still be within spec. I got 38 ohms. Now, the difference between 1.4 ohms uh, is, it, you know, it should not be enough to cause that fuse to blow, but I don't know. Who knows? So... Um, so I um, did a little bit more digging about how to get this, this AC heater element out. And the way you do it is there is a, a cover over the flue like this, metal cover. So I took out a hex screw there and a Phillips screw there and got the cover off. And then there was this little cover that was actually around the heater right up near the, right up near the, like where it meets the flue. And then... There were tabs that held the flue together. See, there's a tab there, and you, I don't know if you can see, it's actually bent out a bit. It was clamped right around. I used this in those pliers to bend it out. And there was another one up there, like that. There's one that's bent out. And once I did that, I was able to open up the flue. And, yeah, there, I'll show you like this. I was able to open up the flue and expose this AC heater element. Now, this heater element is sitting inside of another tube right there. That's a tube welded onto the side of the flue on the inside of this insulation. Uh, there was another gentleman who posted a YouTube video on how to get that tube out, and he actually says he had to take his refrigerator out. I'm not sure if he had his hatch, uh, a different hatch than I do, or a different, I think it was the same fridge, but anyway, 
I did not take the fridge out. I was determined not to do that. And uh, all I had to do was wiggle the top of this heat. Of course, everything unplugged and cooled down. That was the problem. It was already cool. Uh, wiggle this heater back and forth, back and forth inside the trailer until it was high enough to pop right out. Once I took it out, um, you know, to install the new one, which is what you're looking at here, it's just the reverse of that process. Okay, I'm going to take you around to some uh, manuals and whatnot where I found some interesting information. Um, so, again, from the Dometic site, I downloaded all the service manuals. Um, here's one called Service Tips. I read through that, and, uh, and it talks about different troubleshooting procedures. Um, in this manual it talks about the heating component, the heating element for the 2652 refrigerator is 44 ohms. Uh, you probably can't see that, but trust me. Oh, there you go. 44 ohms for, for my element. Your element will be different, so make sure you look it up. And uh, what else do I want to show you from this manual? It also shows the um, power module version 3. I guess that's what they've called the um, and it identifies the fuse there. And there's a few part numbers. Sorry for my crap camera, guys. There's a few part numbers for the version 3. That is uh, what was my, what my refrigerator had. Um, 2652 right there has version 3. If you have the 2812 or the 2852, you also have version 3. If you have a 2612 with uh, serial number da da da, you have version 2. Um, and here are the part numbers for version 1 and 2. Anyway, download the manual if you want to know more about that. That was that one. Then they also had another manual that was uh, pretty useful called the Dometic Diagnostic Service Manual. And you can see all the refrigerators that it supports. And in this refrigerator manual, it talks about the heater element again. Um, Again, here it says the 2652 is 44 ohms and has a current draw of 2.7 amps. And uh, it talks about a procedure to check it. Um, you know, it was out of tolerance by, by 1.4 ohms, but that wasn't the problem. That uh, definitely was not the problem. It, um, when I plugged it into 120 volts, just direct into the wall outlet with, the, with my clamp on ammeter, the current draw was fluctuating greatly. It was anywhere from 1 amp to 6 amps. And so I think that resistance, I know I measured with an ohmmeter, it was 38, 37.5 is actually what it was. Um, but I'm certain that under load, it, uh, it changed drastically. Um, so the information that I think you would like to know is the original heater element part number was 173768-03. And I've also heard that that could be called a 173768-03-04. So, don't know if that's... Anyway, I just read that somewhere. Um, the new replacement part number is 385-064-4422. And uh, they both say uh, 325 watts on them. But I'll point out to you that a lot of these refrigerators, apparently, I, I don't know much about it, but I've heard that they were made with heater elements they're actually 354 watts, uh, and that would line up with my lower resistance reading of uh, 37 and a half ohms, and that's the reason why I thought, you know what, I bet you that resistance was, was the proper resistance since this thing was made. Um, <coughs> so anyway, in the end, I ended up buying a uh, replacement heater. It was 126 bucks, and there's the part number. And I got it from an extremely, extremely helpful RV center. I'd like to give them a little bit of positive press here. Uh, it's called Patterson RV Sales and Service in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And they're at 921 Allison Boulevard, Fredericton, New Brunswick, postal code E3C0C5. And their phone number is 506-454-3535. I, I can't tell you how helpful they were. Um, I was very happy to give them my money. I can just... I, don't, I can't underscore enough how helpful they were, and I'd love to really just give them some positive press. Um, at the time, I didn't know if the uh, heater was bad or it was the circuit, the circuit board that was bad, and just due to some circumstances, I, I bought them both. And um, so this is actually the, the uh, name of an aftermarket circuit board, not the Dometic circuit board. 
and uh, it's called a dinosaur board. Um, their part number is 9950-4, and the uh, price is $193. It was, uh, it, here it is here. Um, this is the box. It comes with a set of installation instructions. It's, it fits a whack of different fridges. So hopefully your fridge is in there. Talks about if you have a two-way, if you have a three-way, if you have a Dometic board, two-way Dometic board, which I did. There's the equivalent pinout. Anyway, it seems to be clear instructions. And, uh, you know, as I say, it fits a bunch of fridges. It's green instead of black. That's fine. Um, the only difference that I really noticed on the board was that uh, it takes these automotive style fuses, not the glass tube type. There's one right there. And that's the 5 amp fuse. Um, check, because I think sometimes these come with the improper fuse. It states 5 amp right on the circuit board, but uh, the actual fuse I saw on one of the boards was 7.5 amps, so you'd want to watch for that. Um, this board also handles the three-way fridges as well. It just needs to be set up a little differently in the uh, three-way, meaning DC as well, DC powered. Um, it actually came with a 25 amp fuse. I, I think that's what that probably is. I didn't open it because I don't have that kind of a fridge. Um, the part number is is uh, the model number is micro so m i c r o space p dash seven one one and uh anyway i would have no hesitation to install this aftermarket um, board if i needed one in fact it might be better than the original and uh you notice the original uh manual recommended to or said it was two point seven amps under load and there i've got my uh, clamp on ammeter showing two point six two point seven um, this is a cheap ammeter, so you know if I kind of change the angle of the, the clamp, it doesn't always read the same. But anyway, you know it's right, right on spec, exactly where it should be. And you have to know that uh, this is now getting extremely hot, which means my fridge is getting cold. So there you go. That's how you uh, fix your Dometic 2652 refrigerator, and uh, you can uh, you can enjoy your day. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>